What I brought to you today is challenging perspectives. I am, teaching history is kind of difficult because a lot of times students come in and they kind of have a notion of what history is. They've heard a lot of stories, they know what, they, what to expect, and so I, I like to offset their perspective by making them think about the other guy. And so that's kind of what this activity is, is about, it's empathy. It's what is empathy, it's not feeling sorry for somebody, it's not about trying to make somebody, trying to be in their shoes, because you can't be in their shoes. And that's one thing that students kind of have this impression is, we're in history, we can be in their shoes. No, every, every situation is different and everything is going to be moldable and changeable. And so that the activity is meant to teach them this. Now this is sort of an experiential learning activity and a bit more in that in, it's not necessarily hands-on learning in the sense of the way you would if you were in social work or in nursing in that sense of that, in that sense of thought. But at the same time, what we really want to take away from it is the idea that you can um, learn conversations and learn how to speak to people in a way that is articulate. And so that's really what, for historians, what we need for my class, what works well for me, that's what our goal is. They need to understand that we have multiple situations, multiple causes, and we can't just look at history and look at events, and you can apply this to your, your coursework, certainly. Look at the events and say, oh, it was black and white, this is right or wrong, and it's, it's just that simple, because it's never that simple. And so by doing this activity, they kind of step back and they go, you're right, it's never that simple. Um, I want them to understand that one small change can affect the outcome, and that's one of those things that, you know, math majors get it right away. You know, it's something that they just know, but for other people who are a bit more, other students who are a bit more um, articulate and artsy in, in their way of thinking, they think, well, you know, I don't matter so much. Well, this kind of helps them to understand that every move they make does have an equal and opposite effect, and every change is significant. And so, important. Critical thinking is probably the most important of all the skills that I want them to get out of this. They take nothing away. I want them to take away the idea that they need to be able to articulate their thought in, a, in an effective manner. So if you're going to say, I voted for that guy, why did you vote for that guy? You should be able to answer that question. If you can't answer that question, well then you really shouldn't have voted in the first place. You should know how you feel and why you feel that way. Own it. And that whole idea of owning your truth is what I would like them to take away from this activity. Always the historian, I want them to come away from history going, it's not all about page turning, books. History is alive, the Constitution is alive. If you think nothing else, you should understand that we do want our students to understand that they can make a difference, that they can change, that um, it's debatable, that everything in, in life is debatable. And that's what this does. It gives them the opportunity to kind of take charge in that. There's three steps of the simulation. You have three things that you're expected to do. First, in class prep, that's my job. Second, out of class research, that's their job. Third is what we actually do. Now, first, of course, you're going to need to have a conversation because they're going to come in green. They're not going to know anything about the topic. I like to use big business. When we talk about the Gilded Age, we talk about um, how does a man like Rockefeller become who he is? So I need to give them the facts, and I give them just the facts. I don't give them um, the, the results that happen, because that's their job. That's the second part. I assign groups, and I assign a person, a perspective. You are Rockefeller, not this is how we felt about Gilded Age. I'm very specific in my assignment. You are going to talk about Rockefeller. You're going to think about Rockefeller. When they research, they are expected to be in groups because I think that they get a better well-rounded idea of what the different um, perspectives can be. <coughs> if they think this is the only way Rockefeller thought, my idea is the only way to think, if they're not in that group, then they can't have that argument, so that's important to consider. Um, I use D2L for this because I teach online as well, and so online they are expected to um, complete a survey with me. This helps to ensure that the activity goes well, and that online they're going to answer questions, they're going to um, tell me, what, how does Rockefeller feel about this? How does, um, how does this react to that? And basically, I'm quizzing them before they get started in the actual simulation. Group works because that helps them <coughs> understand why it's collaborative in class. Now, everyone has a different, now, to understand, everyone has a different person that they're expected to research, each group. But when they research these things, they should pull quotes, they should pull hard research, they're going to own it that way. If they have to do all the research, I'm not doing the research for them, then they certainly have a more um, significant way of thinking about their argument. It's kind of like taking debate and morphing it with role play. Because when we sit in a conversation and Rockefeller is arguing with, um, with 
Herbert, Herbert Spencer on social Darwinism, then they really get the idea because they're not expected to know what is, what is social Darwinism in a very abstract sort of way. They want to know how he thought about it. And that makes them research harder. It makes them think about it in a very different and unique way, a different perspective, which challenges every way that they think about all parts of history. So apply to everything. I could apply it to all kinds of things, but I'm out of time. So there you are. Yeah, thank you.